Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday morning trading session. So the markets just opened up and um, kind of a what I would call a soft open. Markets taking over from where they left off yesterday. We saw still another range bound type day, more or less. Prices went down off the open, bottomed out, went up to near where they made the high of the morning and after which they fell back down toward the close. So kind of active for a day that wasn't really going anywhere. And here we are resuming the day at more or less the same level. So kind of hard to get a feel for this market right now. I'm thinking another range day, maybe. If you're looking at a daily chart, end of day chart, uh, it does look as though the momentum is slowing. So we could see a day here where the market actually dips. But we'll give them a few minutes. Let uh, the market get its bearings. Uh, good morning, Jim. Uh, we've got some advanced decline numbers here from Jim. 1100 on the buy, 1400 on the sell. So a slightly lopsided market to the short side. And now we're seeing a little bit of a push lower, actually. We did have a red bar buy here, which promptly disappeared. Oh, don't tell me they're going to run away on me right out of the gate. That's not nice. So here with the Eagle, we got a, well, can't really call it a trend change signal, can we? Can't call it a, well, we do have a rule of three, sort of. We had one signal here, a second signal here. That's assuming this is the, going to be the test of the high. Ah, darn it. There they go, too. Are you going to give me another chance? Stinkers. Uh, here's the same formation on the Raptor. I suppose it is a cloud crossover, isn't it? The clouds crossed over, the market drifts into the clouds, the clouds reject it or push it back out. There's your cloud crossover signal right there. Hmm. <laughs> oh, come on.
crude oil dead sideways. Here's crude oil on the Eagle. Just nothing out of crude oil this morning. Crude oil's been a very strange market this last year. No, there they go. Probably see something happen here as we get to the next support line around 4689 4690 well we just gotta wait our turn Gold might be giving us a signal here. It's waffling quite a bit. It's not a very pretty looking chart. And if we throw a trend line in, we're reacting to the trend line, but we're also producing, or we have produced a trend change signal right here. So we'll see if we come back and this produces another buy signal. You could take a look at trying to get into this trade cover below the low. See if there's any upside to gold today. Nice rally through the overnight. So the sellers, or pardon me, the buyers stepping in as anticipated around this support area. Now, of course, we're getting a first micro macro cross signal here on the Hawk. Problem with this one is where in the world do you cover it? Well, ideally above that high. It ain't pretty, though. Brother, do I really want to do that? That's a lot of heat to absorb, especially if the market is in a sideways range. That's a little early to tell. Right now, the market looking very bearish. Get up there. Get into some yellow bars so I don't need to worry about you.
Alright, so now we're into a macro pullback. Same kind of situation though. This is not what I would call you know, your warm and fuzzy style trade. Yeah, as we're getting closer to the hard edge, we'll anticipate a, a reaction of some sort from the sellers. Whether or not we get that follow-through, that's the, the big question. I'm going to tighten my trade parameters here to take it on the hash mark. Big move lower skewed the advanced decline numbers a little bit. 1,000 on the buy, 1,600 on the sell. But we'll see if this, this is going to give us one more move lower. I'm looking for the retest of the low now and a chance to maybe pick up a little scalp here. Or I want these bars just to get yellow, get going, turn yellow. Take away all the temptation to try to short you. Come on, get going. Hmm, this is going to be a fairly important bar, I think. How this one is taking its time trying to form, it ticks up for a few bars, doesn't follow through, ticks down for a few bars, doesn't follow through. Falcon filter out of sync here. So we may see a late filter entry signal come off of the Falcon. Here we go on our Hawk now. Let's see if we get that little bitty scalp. And I think they slipped us a tick too. Stinkers. Let's get that tick back. There we go. Just looking for the market to retest the lows here. I could try to run it out, seeing how it's only a single contract, 
but my concern is sideways trading range. That's what I'm thinking right now. Why? Well, we had this big move lower, and we get a little bit of a retrace. Okay, that's fine. It happens. Where's the rest of the move lower? Actually, I should have, in hindsight, I should have maybe held for the green bar sell. Or why didn't it just go into yellow bars? Yeah, Jim says the DAX and uh, oil also range bound. Yes, sir, they are. Gold, too. Gold, I showed you that earlier buying opportunity or potential buying opportunity on Gold Falcon. It didn't go anywhere. It's, here's the Gold Falcon. We were looking at, we were getting a compliment or a secondary signal right up here. And that has since failed and now it's looking like a possible trend change lower so everybody's sideways today The big question is just will the buyers, pardon me, the sellers follow through on their earlier efforts? I'm thinking yes, which is why I shorted the macro pullback. Uh, here's a green bar sell. You could load up. But if they don't turn the market soon, it ain't going to turn. No overly bullish signals while we're waiting. I'm just looking for a chance now to do something with the stops. days, is it? Can't even get a retest? Are you kidding me? This little hiccup does not qualify as a retest of the lows. The advanced decline numbers are almost even up. 1290 on the buy, 1360 on the sell. That's close enough to even to say the market's dead neutral. see where my support and resistance lines are at. Oh yes, okay, so 47.10 is the last last ditch for the sellers to step on board. I hate to see a retracement that deep. I'm 
that would be our median line. That's where the sellers stepped in before out of the open. Push the market way down here. Look at that. They're not even giving me a chance. That's just mean. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to get tapped here in a second. Stops above that high. Yep, stops above that high. Well, this is extremely rare that you don't get one chance to at least adjust your stops a little bit. The market goes straight down. It goes straight up. That is very rare indeed. Yeah, I think so. Jim says they they ran the stops, washed out the bulls, and now the bears. I'm not so sure if it's that much stop running or just, you know, the strong, the strong bears are selling from up here. They've recognize early that it's a trading range they're trying to short from up here if they get stopped out then I think we're going to see a rally higher the strong bulls are buying down here the weak bears like us that got in very early are going to take any chance we can get to get this trade down to break even or to minimize our loss. And now all these people that bought here and are having the market pull against them, well, they're going to find themselves in the same predicament as we are, which is the whole thing that keeps fueling a, uh, a trading range. Right? If, if prices manage to get all the way back down here, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to buy. Right? We've got our buy orders in here. We're going to buy at the bottom end or near the bottom end of the trading range. Some traders will buy early. They'll buy just so they can get the trade to break even and they can get flat. Well, what do buy orders do? They support the bottom end of the trading range and the market will go up. These traders up here who bought, let's say they put, placed their stops all the way down here, their profit-taking orders are what? Their sell orders. Right? So if the market goes up and they hit their profit-taking order, those are sell orders that's going to help force the market down. That's how trading ranges become established. So we're actually getting a first micro macro cross higher. I'm going to try to hold my stop here and hope beyond hope that maybe <laughs> we'll see the market slide and I will get a chance to get to break even or maybe even realize a small profit on this. See, if it is a trading range, they're going to they're going to panic all the buyers that are buy, going to buy in here. And where are they going to place their stop? They're looking at this also and they say, well, i got to put my stop way, way, way down here. And they're going to hope that the bulls have control of the market, which they well might. It's a little bit early to tell. After this move, I would have said the bears had control. But now after this move, it looks as though the buyers have control. 
So where are their profit objectives? Oh, well, a normal scalping target, probably right about here, around $50 out. And they're not all buying on breakouts. A lot of them are buying on limit orders, right? They'll, they'll buy the low of the bar, they'll buy the close of the bar, they'll buy the open of the next bar, whatever. They'll just buy in because they believe the market's going to go higher. I tend to buy on a breakout or sell on a breakout because I'm looking for momentum. And there will be traders like that as well. There will be traders who will buy the breakout of this bar and then they'll just keep following it down. They'll buy the breakout of the next bar and so on. Hoping to keep themselves on the right side of the, the trading equation. So here they come with a little bit of an uptick. It's going to be our first micro macro cross higher. And like I say, I'm just hoping now that this rally will fail, just like this sell attempt failed, and that the market will actually turn and head lower. If not, I'm going to get tapped. on down. Let's put the buyers in the same pickle the sellers are in. Hmm. Jim says the YM is already at a 50% retracement. Let's take a look here. For those of you who like to follow FIB levels. Yeah, there it is. Also into the hard edge. So we would be looking for a hard edge bounce signal, a reason to short. What I want to see is I want to see the market take out this little swing low. If we get below this little swing low here, I can almost guarantee that prices are going to try to retest the lows. Note, I said almost. You guys can hear that, can you? Jim says, Eric, do you have birds? No, those are the uh, the birds outside my, my window here. I've got the, wind, the office window open. Where we live, we live next to the Trans-Canada Trail, which is... Uh, a trail system that you could literally walk or bike or ride your horse across the country if you wanted. It's a pedestrian only trail, so no motorcycles or anything of that nature. Those guys have to stay to the highway. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, Jim says, sounds nice, sounds like cool weather. We're actually having a little bit of a heat wave here. I know it's nothing compared to what the folks in the southern states are used to, but uh, let me get the forecast here today. I think it is going to be... A hot one. Let's see here. What's the forecast? All right. So here you go for everybody who's interested. Duncan, B.C. Ooh, it's going to be 29 degrees today. Now that makes no sense to you. Uh, in Fahrenheit, that's going to be 85. So that's plenty warm for this part of the world. And it looks like it's going to be nice right through the weekend. Oh, which reminds me, uh, while the market is this slow, um, there's not going to be a trading room this Monday. I'm not going to be available on Monday, August the 1st. So we'll resume on the 2nd again. Working a possible three arrow consolidation and maybe even a macro pullback signal. I don't point this out very often, uh, but it is possible to short the failure of the first micro macro cross or a macro pullback. You know, normally when we're looking for failure signals, we will look at something like a red bar buy signal and we'll look to sell the failure of the red bar buy. So here's a red bar buy signal. It's You can either buy it up, so you can either place your entry to, to buy here, or you can short the failure. That's normally the only signal we do that on because the red bar buys and green bar sells on your hawk tend to develop toward the end of a trend and therefore there is a realistic possibility that the signal will fail and that prices will head lower. Well, you can actually do that for all your signals. Now, I don't recommend it because I don't want you wasting your time looking for counter trend signals, but here we have a first micro macro cross signal higher. Normally, we would look to buy that. Well, you could look to short it also. In this case, of course, in this case, it would have worked out. <clears throat> I'm not sure we would have hit our profit target there on that re this little uptick but normally we are only looking to go with trend on those types of signals because they tend to have a better probability to the upside than to short the failure why am i telling you that well we've got a first micro macro cross we're working a four arrow consolidation uh we're getting a macro pullback signal here so there is a, a possibility that you could short this whole mess and look for a profit potential to the downside so when you suspect the market is in a sideways range you can actually fade the signal that's what's called fading the signal if i'm sure you've heard that term sometime or another and we can just just can't get them to give up this 4706 area. Is that a support line? No, it's not. We're actually still bouncing off the median line, and I'm not liking this late filter entry that just printed on the Falcon. So here, there's a late filter entry signal. It looks like the market is, in fact, going to try to rally. And I think I just got tagged. Oh, I did, too. Oh, well. As unpleasant as that is, I know um, my loss was still restricted to only a small portion of my trading capital, namely 2%, which is what I set it at. So for those of you who may have taken that trade as well and are going to write me saying, Eric, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. 
the market is occasionally it's going to behave like this. It's going to throw you this little signal. Everything looks good. And then you get no follow through and no chance to get out. It happens. Fortunately, it does not happen very often, but it can happen. So I save you a whole lot of typing. You did not do anything wrong. Still not convinced we're not in a sideways trading range, though. In fact, if we get a soft edge sell here on the Raptor, I may go for it. So the soft edge sell occurs against the trend. It is a counter trend signal, so by its nature, it's a little riskier. However, the soft edge sell signal does tend to have a decent track record being reasonably high probability because it must always, always, always be preceded by a retest of the high or the low, whatever the case may be. In hindsight, this was a soft edge buy signal. However, when that was printing, there was no way to know that. I would not have, come on, I would not have called this a retest of the low. Therefore, I, I would have passed on that signal. Unfortunately, it made a nice smooth progression higher. The worst thing that could happen to us today, well, the worst thing, there's a lot of worse things, but if the market makes a very tight range, we can trade a big range like this, but if the market is confined to a tiny little range like this, that would be very difficult trading. So let's see if we get a soft edge sell signal. And I may try to hop in on that. And just look to see if the market doesn't fade back here toward the lows somewhere. Should, at the very least, I suspect 4,700. Just because it's kind of in the middle of this range and it's a nice round number. Oh, here, let me show you, let me demonstrate the failure of the, the other signals that I was just talking about. Oh, and we're getting, you know what, we're getting a red bar, red bar buy signal. I'll hold out for that. Oh, and there's our short signal on the Falcon, on the Raptor. Sorry, I'm getting all my tools mixed up here. And we'll give it a little bit of elbow room. There we go. So soft edge sell. This is totally high risk, folks. The market didn't want to go lower here, and now it looks like it doesn't want to go higher here. So I'm banking on a trading range. Come on. See, look at how they're just holding me almost to the tick. What's what's this bar? Forty seven oh six. Right on the number. Oh, we're gonna get some money back here in a second. All right, so now we have a four arrow consolidation. We have a macro pullback. We have the whole schmear. So I'm going to short the failure. I'm going to look to take the failure of this signal. Oh, and here we come with a red bar buy again. So you could hold out for the red bar buy to form and then short it all, but I'm, I'm going to load up. <laughs> all right, there we go. So we're short. <clears throat> 
and we're going to see if we can't get now to the bottom end of this trading range. All right, so we took profit on the took a scalp profit here on the Raptor. Just hit the break even trigger. I meant to roll my Raptor target out a little more, but oh well. We'll see if we can't make it up on the on the runner as we watch the traders the buyers all the people who bought here who covered below 4706 they're now having to exit their orders some of them would have covered around a 50 percent level which is around 4700 we'll see if they're forced out and then we're going to see the market drift back down here toward the lows where they would have found my buy order, my limit order, my profit order. Stinkers that just went a little bit too high on me. Oh, Jim, jumping in with both feet. <laughs> Jim says, I loaded up and had 16 contracts at 72 and covered at 60 and 58 and 51. I'm still holding one. <laughs> wow, no messing around. Come on, get down there. You know you want to. There we go, come on. There we go. So remember my profit taking order was somewhere around 46.92. That's probably where we're going to see uh, the market try to bounce. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe go with the bar high low, roll this in a little bit, maybe a couple bars back. There we go. That's all I get. Because again, I suspect trading range, not trending day, and in a trading range, you want to take profit when you have it. Don't leave too much on the table, because they will take it away from you. So we had this strong buying going on here, around 46 what is that, 94, just unfortunate in the hawk trade that I wasn't able to ride out this little itty bitty swing they tagged me for what two, blew my stops by two or three ticks well we got a little bit back I could have run this one out in anticipation of the failure here so once again if you suspect the market is in a trading range and how how would you do that? Well, by the lack of follow through. Right? We saw a strong move down, came back, got a macro signal, pullback signal, and then what happened? There's no follow through, not even enough to hit a scalping target. That right away should get the spidey senses tingling and saying, uh oh, this could well be a trading range kind of day. And then the market goes up. And you get a buy signal, and again, very little follow-through. Enough to hit your scalp target here, at least. But then, once they get below the lows, the market crumbles. So, looking very much like a trading range kind of day. In a trading range sort of day, we want to buy near the bottom, and we want to sell near the top. So, we're going to... We're going to look at things like soft edge buy and sell signals. We're going to 
follow sorry here just gotta do a little housekeeping we're going to uh, look for failures of signals So look at, I'm impressed how well we're following the support and resistance sweep today. Back down here to 46.96 and that's where the buyers step up. Alright, well, managed a little profit on that anyhow. Well done, Jim. Jim says last just got out of his last one up 35 ticks. Nicely done. Oh, yes. Jim says oil's unwinding a little bit here. We did get a, here on the Hawk, we've got a green bar sell. Tough signal to take, though. Well, actually, maybe not, because I would expect one more retest here. See, if I'd be looking at this on the Hawk, I'd be thinking, okay, downtrend, uptrend. This is a retest of the lows, but the market may give me one more itty bitty retest here before heading higher. So you have a choice on this one. You could look to short it or you could also look to buy it. Buying it, however, means you got to cover it way down there. And of course, it didn't engage the, the buy or the failure of the green bar sell rather it fell off rather sharply and they're still going wow that's something I didn't think we would see crude oil that close to $40 a barrel since they uh, managed to rally it up to 50 something. So not much happening here at the moment. We, you know, we do have the first micro macro cross. It's true right there. First micro macro cross. Guess where you got to cover it? Don't cover it here. You need to cover it up there. Oh, well, you would have hit your break even trigger and got stopped out of break even. Working a macro pullback now, but and yes, it's a valid signal. It's a valid macro pullback. But again, you got to try to take the whole context into account here. 
Don't just trade the last three bars, right? Don't just focus on this and then say, oh, darn, what did I do wrong? Well, you got to try to take a look at the big picture and say, what kind of day is this today? Is the market, does the market look more bullish or bearish? And if you don't know, and there happens to be an eight-year-old nearby, grab them and ask them, because kids don't complicate things. All right, here's the macro pullback signal. We'll see whether we get a little shot to the downside. I'm, I haven't taken this one, but we'll see whether or not it reaches its profit objective. I suspect it might. I suspect we'll get at least a retest here of the low before the market may turn and head higher again. Come on. See, a lot of traders are going to look at this and see a bear flag type arrangement. And they're going to expect the market to break lower from there. That's essentially what the macro pullback signal is. It's more or less a, a bear flag or a bull flag. That's why it's so reliable. And the more it has that flag formation to it, the more reliable it tends to be. I don't think there's anything else going on here. Am I missing anything? No, not really. Possible cloud crossover here on the Raptor. Uh, the clouds have crossed over. We're not producing a signal just yet. Is that getting closer? Has it? No, nope, hasn't moved. <clears throat> if you did, if you are short this, I wouldn't panic. I'm pretty sure we're going to see it retest the low here. You could, if you are panicking, you can take your stop now and you can roll above the high of this candle here with this nice little tiny wick to it. And you very likely may have hit your break-even trigger already also. There we go. So a little bit of follow through, finally got to our target. Hooray for us. 
this is also producing a four arrow consolidation, although, yikes. I don't know how heavily vested we want to be on this. Oh, got our trend chain signal here on the Falcon, which we're working, and also our cloud crossover signal here on the Raptor for you Raptor traders. You could be short right here. Uh, again, where do you put your stops? Well, unfortunately, stops got to go above the high. Because if we are in a trading range, that's where the market's going to try to go before the sellers try to push it back down. All right, so a little bit of sideways flounder here. Jim's following the equivolume charting, and he's got a little observation to share here. He says he's noticed that on the equivolume candles, the large ones where the wick touches the base is where the buyers or sellers come in. So let's see here. Where's my YM? Come on, YM, there you are. So I think what Jim is referring to is this type of scenario here. See, we got a lot of volume, and we got a tail touching the base, and then that shows you a shift in, in momentum. Here's another one tail kind of touching the base. I've noticed that myself. I haven't really been able to quantify it in any way that I can share with people, but yeah, it definitely seems to indicate a turning point, doesn't it? The YM now at the bottom end of its trading range, so if you get a soft edge buy signal, you might well see the market rally up a little bit here.
this dead sideways trading just is so deceiving because you can't tell which way the market's going to break. It's almost, well, like a roulette wheel, right? You take your, pays your nickels, you takes your chances. We're getting a late filter entry signal here to short. Note the late filter entry signal here did not follow through. And again, that's because of the, the whole context of this morning where the market came down sharply, reversed sharply, went higher, and no follow through on the buy side. All right, well, here's a late filter entry short. There's the signal. Can I cover it? Yes, I can. We'll see whether or not they try to scurry toward the bottom end of this trading range. And if I can actually get out of that with a, uh, with a profit. So once we get a few bars in our direction here, what I'll try to do is uh, bring my stops in a little bit more aggressively. So I won't be the only one selling here. There will be a lot of traders looking to short on the breakout. And we'll see here in a moment whether it was a trap for the sellers or whether the bears really are in control and they end up pushing lower. Come on, give me that break even. There we go, come on. Oh, look at that. Just stuck above the break even trigger. We're going to force this trade to break even now, I think. Because this was the same area, remember where the uh, Hawk trade, where I had my profit target, was right down here, 46.92. All right, so go ahead, take me out of break even. It might follow through, but really, I just don't want to hang out for it. It's just too much sideways-ness. Is that a word? Uh, nice observation here from Jim. Jim writes, I can't tell you how many times where my impatience gets me into low probability trades. Hence shorting areas on charts, bands, support and resistance lines, Bollinger Bands, etc. Without a test of the top and bottom and its failure. 
it, tend, it leads to very uncomfortable trading. <laughs> yes, I imagine it would. <laughs> so really what Jim is referring to is just watching for, watching the price action, really. Look for the retest, look for the failure, look for your signal. When all your ducks are in a row, it works. Shorting from here, yes, it's a cloud crossover, so could short here. There's some room here still, right? We're looking at a possible retest of the low. If we are in a trading range, we're going to expect the buyers to step up down here somewhere. So it's a cloud crossover. The Falcon showed a late filter entry. I think we had a macro pullback or something going on the Hawk. So there were a few signals here suggesting, yeah, okay, there might be a little bit of room here for a trade. We made another lower high and everything looked well and good until the market stopped just shy of our profit objective and then started to make tracks higher. So I'm just as happy to be out of break even. Again, looking at the context of the day, the nice thing about day trading is that you can get a feel for the day. You can get a feel for what kind of day it is, and today is very sluggish. No follow-through. We've gotten buy signals. We've gotten sell signals. And very little follow-through, right? Quick move down, quick move up, sideways. Quick move down, sideways, trying to move down, no follow-through. So th that has all the markings of a sideways trading range. But once again, you wait for the, the setup. Like here we're getting now a soft edge buy. Well, it depends how you want to see it. Do you want to see... This, as the retest of the low, if that's how you see it, then go ahead, buy the soft edge buy, cover your trade down here, and look for the market to continue to rally. If you do not consider this to be your retest of the low, if you think there has to be something a little fresher, a little more recent, so we've got a downtrend, now you're looking for this. You're looking for this part now. Are the sellers really done? Well, if they are, they're going to make a little move lower, and then they're going to make another move higher, and we'll get another buy signal. This will be the more reliable one to buy. If, in fact, the sellers are done, which I think they are. I think the sellers have left the building and they'll sell back here 4710, 4712, 47.14, 47.15. They'll be all over selling that. I'm not so sure they want to sell 4700. And likewise, the buyers. The buyers will be all over sell, buying 4690, 4689, 4688. They'll get all over buying that. Yesterday, I think, made a move toward 4680 before the session expired. Yeah, there it is. 4682. And then, boom, up she goes. So if the market happens to drift and get as low as 46.82, you know the buyers are going to be all over that because it's a sideways kind of day. Uh, we'll hang with them for a few more minutes here, but I think we're going to close up the room a little bit early. If anybody has any questions, please type away. I'll wait. But not much going on this morning.
Hmm. Well, here we are, bottom end of the range. Now with a first micro, oops, sorry, too soon. First micro macro cross, no, uh, macro line not in sync yet. Getting a little bit excitable there. Almost thought we're going to see a rally up. All right, folks, I think we're going to call it a day. And, uh, well, we'll get together Friday. Just a quick reminder, no trading room on Monday, this coming Monday. No trading room. Hope to see you tomorrow, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye for now.